Hey there Pokemon fans, Fargemon 101 here with another Pokemon Sun and Moon update for you. So E3 broke um, last week, uh, this video is going to be a little bit later than I wanted but real life's kind of got in the way. Um, so these videos take a little bit of prep work as well so I've run out of time to get them done before but really wanted to get these out there. So we had three new Pokemon revealed during the E3 uh, which was Pickpet, Grubbin and Young Goose, we're going to have a look at those shortly. And um, there's a ton of other information that was revealed and we're going to run through that for you right now. So, the first thing we got was there were some new Pokemon that was discovered. Um, here's the first of the three that we saw, uh, which is Pickpack. Um, it's the Burt Pokemon that we saw being designed on the computer in the original announced trailer for us. Um, it's based on the Rootpecker, which is local to the Hawaiian area. And um, this little guy is absolutely adorable. He gets normal flying typing, which is pretty standard for one of the Burt Pokemon. I'm guessing we're probably going to meet him fairly early on in the game, um, which goes the same for these three. They kind of look like they're going to be quite early on encounters. Um, he gets the ability Keen Eye, which prevents loss of accuracy. He also gets Skill Link, which allows multi hit moves to always hit for the max amount of turns. So I um, think like Rock, Rock Blast will always hit five times uh, and those sort of moves. So uh, Next up, we have Young Goose. Um, so Young Goose here is a normal type. Um, he definitely belongs to the sort of Zigzagoon type family. Um, he gets the ability Strong Jaw, which increases damage from bite moves like Crunch and Ice Fang. Um, but he also gets a new ability, um, which is quite an interesting one, particularly for battles, um, as it does double damage to any Pokémon that switches in on the hit, uh, which is called Stakeout. Um, it's huge for a competitive meta, as it's going to make people very, very cautious switching into this thing, even if you're swapping the wall and if it's going to do double damage. Um, hopefully this little guy does get, during his evolutions, get the stats boots to warrant using in competitive, because it's quite an interesting ability, um, so hopefully his stats will do it justice. Um, expect to see this guy rocking out on Battle Spot in the near future, um, however he does look not unlike a certain presidential candidate at the moment. Um, comparisons were made. Uh, he does look not like Mr. Donald Trump. Um, expect to see a few of them called that. I'd be amazed if we don't get some nicknames along those sort of lines of him. Uh, and next one that we saw was a Pokemon called Grubbin. Um, he gets the ability Swarm, which works like Blaze or Torrent, so it increases the power of Book Type moves by 50% uh, when he's low on health. Uh, not much else, but we really need to see what these evolve into. I'm guessing some sort of bit like Vivillian or Butterfree, um, some sort of Moth Butterfly type bug would be quite cool. Um, we'll see how he goes, but he looks quite cool, really interesting to see what this little guy evolves into. Uh, and then we moved on and we get our first look at Majanium. Um, she is still Fairy, which we a lot of us speculated early on. Um, so she just got a typing. She also gets the ability Soul Heart. So Soul Heart is another new ability in the game. Uh, it works like a Moxie boost, but unlike, the, unlike actually Moxie itself, um, the ability kicks in when any Pokemon on the battlefield, including her teammates, gets uh, KO'd during battles. Um, so in double battle this is going to make her really really dangerous when there's three mons on the field so if somebody KOs your partner and she lives she gets an attack boost and then can promptly go on to destroy the other partner's team. Um, so quite a scary scary addition to doubles. Don't know what the VGC meta will be next year but if she's in it definitely one to watch out for. Uh, we also got our first look at her signature move which is called Flare Cannon. Um, we see it going off from the Pangaroo, uh, Pangoro uh, and Pangoro gets utterly utterly wrecked. Uh, I'm guessing it comes up as super effective. I'm guessing this is a fairy type move because Pang wrote his dark fighting, so fairy type move would be times for effective. Um, it looks wicked. She does a charge and there's this massive beam of pink life that goes off. Um, poor old Pang just gets destroyed into next week. Um, we also got introduced to a brand new battle mode. Um, so the new battle mode is Battle Royale. Um, it's very, very similar to Free For All. So Free For All was a thing that people sort of made up. It was never an official thing by Pokemon. They did a team battle for double battles, which was cool, but people turned that into Free For All, which is also really good fun. We've had some good fun on those in the past, particularly on live streams and things like that. Um, this work mode works slightly, slightly different. Um, so with Battle Royale, um, it's the last, it's not last man standing like Free For All. Um, as soon as one play, player's team is defeated, the, free, the battle royale ends, and then scores are totted up based on how many damage you did, how many KOs you got, uh, how many Pokemon you had left, and such like. Um, makes it a bit more tactical, so you can either all pick on one person, but then you, what the odds of you winning aren't great, or you can eliminate a person at a time, maybe come up with some um, truces during the match. 
but be really, really interesting. The other interesting thing from this screenshot, and they did confirm it as the person asking questions um, on the live stream for it did raise the same question, is all the trainers you can see on this picture are all wearing different clothes. Um, they did confirm that train customization is 100% back for Sun and Moon, although we speculated on it in some of the NH trailers because of the different coloured clothing and the different stripes, but definitely, definitely coming back. Um, really, really pleased for that. I really miss being, having, particularly on Battle Spot, where you, you, you actually see somebody else's train and they look different to you. Now everybody just looks like the main protagonist for Morris. So that's a really cool feature that I bring back. So really, really pleased for that. And just a few more there. So you can see you've got the accounts that you've got. So this was a fairly straightforward. You've got move time, match time, uh, another nice shot of the trainer, and this match book took place between Relic, Popolo, Litton, and shockingly Pikachu. So the colour there represents the corner of the, the wrestling ring that they're all actually in. Um, which actually is that Araxus, the ring based around an Araxus it looks like in the background. Um, the numbers on there indicate how many Pokemon that person's actually got left and once that decreases to zero the match ends. Um, so really really interesting. Um, or it could be score actually, I think it's score because I've only got one left on there. So we're still working out the exact mechanics of it but it does look quite cool. Um, we do get another look at those blasted bracelets, there's no news on those on the stream itself so we'll have to wait and see for that, we're guessing there'll be another announcement slightly later on. And then finally, just after we got all that E3 information out of the way, and we got to see quite a lot of the E3, the new battle screens. Um, the new battle screens, for instance, now show you what moves are effective and not effective against different Pokemon when you battle them, it remembers it. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I kind of get it, it's great as an introduction to the game. I'm hoping that we only get it on the main game and it doesn't transfer over to Battle Spot because it will make it a little bit easier and really we should be learning the types. We don't want to make it too easy where it actually tells you what move does what against what Pokemon. Um, but that's just my personal preference, you guys might disagree. One of the other cool things we have now done is it actually shows stat drops. Um, a little bit like it does when you play on Showdown, so if you get intimidated it will show how much your attack's lowered. If you get burnt it will do the same. So that's quite a handy little thing, I think that's a really cool addition because it is, you know, there's a lot of switching and that going on, it's very hard to keep track of, well, how many times have I been intimidated. So having that on screen is really, really cool. I don't think it'll affect it too much in terms of mechanics of the game, but it's just a really nice little feature I've added. Um, but this broke on the website shortly after the announced stream. We didn't get to see this on the stream itself, but they've actually now announced two new phases or forms for the legendaries. Um, so we've got Solgaleo gets Radiant Sun and Lunala's Fort gets Full Moon phase. Um, really, really cool looking. Um, it says on the website that they take these forms when they realise their full power. We don't exactly know what this means yet, whether it's something to do with the bracelets or some form of evolution. Uh, or whether it's something that's triggered a bit like Rayquaza's is a Mega Revolution, so it only happens when they use a certain move, maybe, um, and it triggers this sort of change. Um, it looks like they get some sort of stat boost. There's a little bit of change to the imagery with the clouds and that around it, the actual one itself, but it's not like Mega Rayquaza, which was a completely different change in appearance. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Any ideas or thoughts on how these could be triggered or what it actually means for them? Uh, let me know in the comments section down below. It'd be great to get a bit of discussion down there on what those are. And that's it guys for now, um, so that was pretty much all the information we had out of E3, um, there is live stream footage on their website, um, I'm sure if you just YouTube it there'll be a ton of other stuff on there. Um, I'm not going to post it on here simply because I don't want to get copyright struck, uh, I've already had one of those on the Sunday Moon video so I don't want to go down that road again with it, So, um, but I'm sure it's easy enough to find for you guys. Um, still loads, so they did manage to show off a lot, there's still lots we don't know about, we still don't know what those bracelets do whether it's going to be tied into Mega Revolutions or it's an advanced form of Mega Revolution plus something else, we're not sure yet. Um, but remember guys, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this breakdown video, please go ahead and hit that like button down below. Uh, if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching, make sure you check out some of the other content while you're on here. And if you enjoyed that, make sure you hit that sub button so we can keep you updated on any new content coming to the channel. As always guys, take care out there and if I don't see you around, I will see you on Battlespot. Bye for now.